so it snowed last night. Um, kids are thrilled. Uh, me, not so much, mostly because I have to work in it. It's a snow day. Um, but my favorite part of the snow is how it hangs on those trees. Isn't that beautiful? It's just fantastic. So hopefully you can hear this. It's a little bit windy. We're headed down to the barn. We'll do some chores. And then it's going to be inside stuff today because I'm not quite prepared to work in this. So uh, we'll get those barn chores done. And uh, it's just the snow. And, uh, and then we're going to work on some corned beef today. Good morning. So we did our barn chores. And I said I was going to do corned beef. And so last Sunday, today's Monday. So last Sunday, I put a brisket in here, and it's in a bag too, because I couldn't get it quite under the brine, and I didn't want to make too much brine. Um, so corned beef is traditionally made with brisket. Uh, you can make it with an eye round roast, and uh, you can make it as corned beef, or an eye round, you could smoke that, and you would have pastrami. So we had brisket from a steer that we got from another, from another farmer and I decided to make some corned beef because what you buy at the store is not as good as what I remember when I was a kid. So basically I cooked up a brine and I'll put that down in the comments so, or in the description so that you can, you can follow the recipe and I bagged it so that it would stay submerged and then every day I tarned it so that everything, it would get brined evenly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of the brisket, just one piece. I think that's all I'm going to cook for lunch today. Um, and I might smoke the other half. Um, and we're going to simmer it. So lunch is a few hours away, which is good because it's just after 8 o'clock. So I can simmer this this morning and my husband and I can have really nice uh, corned beef sandwiches on this nice loaf of sourdough that I cooked up last night. So we're going to slice this. This has got some rye flour in it. I'm uh, on the hunt for a nice sourdough rye recipe that actually works for me. I really struggle with it. Um, so I'm just going to cut this open so you can see what we've got. So I'll take this out. Oh, this looks great. So this is the piece of brisket and it's been brined in pickling spices, just like the same kind of spices you would use if you were making um, bread and butter pickles um, or green tomato chow and salt and water. And it's, it's nice and firm, the meat. We didn't trim too much of the fat off because I kind of like the fat. So I'm just going to take this over to the sink and we're going to rinse this. It's got a nice color to it. it. Smells really good. It smells like corned beef should. Um, it does have some curing salt in it, so it will have a bit more of a pink color. You don't have to use curing salt. I just prefer it. Um, it also, if you don't use a curing salt, it doesn't keep as well. But So we're just going to take this over to the sink and then put this in the pot here. We're going to rinse this off. So there we go. So I've put just enough water in it to cover. I'm just going to give my hands a quick wash. And to the pot for simmering, I'm going to add a tablespoon of pickling spices because it just, it adds to the flavor while we're simmering it. Um, yes, it's been sitting in some pickling spice and salt. Just going to put a tablespoon in here. That's it. And an onion. And when you're cutting onions, I know people, some people find them really, really strong, but the best thing you can do is use a really sharp knife. So I just throw my knife quickly on the sharpening steel, and then that way, hopefully, there's not too many tears. So the other key is to not cut the root off. If you cut the root off, they tend to weep and then they get they get really, really strong. So I'm just going to peel this. I'm getting into it here. There we go. 
So I hope everybody had a good weekend. We uh, we got some stuff done. We're uh, working on some some projects in the house, um, and we're going to be working on more projects in the house because, as you can see, winter's here. Um, I'm not sure that this snow is going to stick. It's the first snow of the year, and it usually doesn't. But I've been wrong before, so it's quite possible that it will. Um, so now. I will be doing some more corn tape because we have another steer coming. So this is just the end of the steer we got last year. We got half a cow and we found out that that wasn't quite enough for our needs. We had some odd cuts like brisket that um, require a little more attention. Um, I'm actually going to cut the root end off on this because I'm just going to cut this in chunks like that. Put it in the pot, cut the root end off. Now, onions, they go in the compost here. They don't go to our chickens. We do give our chickens some kitchen scraps. Um, we don't give them brassicas like broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, that kind of stuff. Um, and we don't give them onion skins. So that'll go straight to the compost. So that's it. We're gonna put this back in the fridge. Or I might, I might rinse it off and smoke it. I haven't decided yet. If I smoke it, then I'll have some nice thin sandwich meat, some pastrami. Um, but this, we're going to put it on the stove, put a lid on it, and we're going to simmer this at least two hours, probably two and a half. You want to simmer it until it's tender, like fork tender. And then take it out of the brine, let it set for about 10 minutes, and then you'll be able to slice, slice it. Um, and it should make some really good sandwiches. I'm really excited. And I think my husband's going to be really excited about this for lunch too. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done simmering. And uh, I'll show you some, the sourdough as well. Sourdough is a little bit more involved. Um, I think we'll venture into that in the winter. There's a little more details to uh, making a sourdough starter, uh, shaping a sourdough loaf. Um, it's absolutely something a beginner can do. Uh, it just takes a little bit more time. It takes a little bit more practice. And I will pop the recipe for that down again in the description so that if you're, you've made sourdough and you'd like to try making the loaf that we've got here, you can do that. Um, so yeah, so we'll pop this on the stove and I'm move my loaf of bread out of the way. So we have gas here, and I have to admit, I'm a fan. I like it. We lose power fairly consistently here, and at the very least, I can cook my kids some dinner. So I just need matches because the electronic ignition is gone. So this is my second cup of coffee for the day, and uh, it's kind of necessary today just to deal with the snow. But uh, we're going to do some inside chores. I've got some organizing to do. I've got like some collection of some spices here. I'm like reorganizing my spices. I found the drawer I had everything in. Um, it was just too heavy. You can see the drawer is actually, I pulled it out. And uh, it, um, it needs a little bit of repair. And I think it's just because I had way too much weight in that drawer. So we've reorganized. I've put my spices up in here, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, Everything's, I don't know if you probably can't see it, but it's all, it's all organized and labeled in jars like this so I can see everything. Um, I really liked it in the drawer though because you could pull it out, you could read the lids because I labeled everything up there and it worked for me, but that's not to be. So one of the projects that I actually have today is I had some gamma lids delivered and I love these things. Um, they fit a five gallon pail. They're a two piece unit bought them on Amazon. They're not particularly cheap, um, but so they fit on a five gallon pail. They have a gasket inside here and that fits on. And what I like about this is that this just screws in and it's so much easier to get in the pails. Um, I store my flour, rice, beans in five gallon pails um, because we buy bulk. And this makes it so much easier for me to get into it because I cannot 
peel open those lids on a five gallon pail. So I picked up those today, so I have some buckets that I also picked up that I can't separate right now. It's gonna take me a bit. Pick these up, the entire for Canada. Um, these are food grade plastic. You do not need to spend a fortune. These are really jammed together. I feel like they were jammed together when they were wet. Anybody who flower farms, which we do, will tell you not to stack the bu buckets together when they're wet, because you will never get them apart. It's so frustrating. Here we go. All right. So, my project today. I'm gonna take some of my coffee. Mm. It's really nice. My husband makes, he makes the coffee. He does a really good job. Um, so these five gallon buckets, I'm going to wash them out and I haven't done that yet. So I'm not actually going to push this get right down on, but what you do is you take a mallet because you can't push this on by hand. There's absolutely no way you're going to get this on by hand, but once it's on there, the gasket that's inside there makes a really nice, it's supposed to be watertight. I haven't actually tested it. Um, but I very much like the seal that these lids provide. And then this. It's just so much easier to get in and out of. It really is. I just love them. So I think these right now on Amazon.ca, I don't know what they are in the U.S., but Amazon Canada, they were like 18, 18 or 19 dollars. They kind of go up and down a little bit, but that's about the price. But it's a lot cheaper than buying food grade buckets um, with the lid already intact. It's like they're, they end up somehow being like 30 dollars each. I don't really know how that works, but so for my flour and stuff, I like these lids. And then I just use a dry erase marker and I write on it when I put in it and the date I put it in here. Um, so that's kind of one of today's projects because I did finally plant some flour on sale. It's all purpose. Um, and we do for long-term storage, I like to have the all-purpose flour. It stores a lot longer because it doesn't have um, the bran and the germ in it. So whole wheat flours tend to go rancid faster because they have more oils in it, whereas the white flour doesn't. It, so that's why I have a tendency to make the 50-50 uh, whole wheat and white loaf that we, we made the other day. Um, and if you look back to the previous video, there's a, a recipe with that as well. So that's on today's list. Finishing organizing my spices is on today's list. Fixing my drawer is also on today's list. Um, and then this winter, the finishing we're going to finish these cabinets. So these are all raw wood and they haven't been uh, oiled or stained or painted or anything. So that's this winter's project is to take all the doors off and get them painted and oil all the face frames. And we haven't done that. So, um, so I hope everybody's prepared for winter. <laughs> if you're not, that's okay. Cause we're really, we're, we're not, we are also not prepared for winter. We never really are. Um, we just, it comes and we hope for the best. So we'll show you what the corned beef looks like when it comes out uh, of the pot. And uh, I'll make sure I get that recipe down below for you.
everyone. So it's actually after lunch. Uh, my dad showed up just in time to have a Reuben sandwich and this corned beef turned out fabulous. But I still wanted to show you what it looked like here. So we pulled it out of, of, the, of the water and we let it sit for about 10 minutes. And then I sliced it off. I don't want to use this fork. I want to use the one I already used on meat. Um, and you like to slice it against the grain. And I don't like slicing it too thick. You can, but we made sandwiches that we grilled and we used some homemade sauerkraut that I had made um, back in the fall. I had just a glut of cabbages. So this is a sauerkraut that I made and it has caraway seeds in it and it's fantastic. So we put this on the homemade sourdough and uh, grilled it up with a bit of cheese, made Reuben sandwiches, but you can just take some sauerkraut and I've got some hot mustard here, which is my preference. I, I really like a hot mustard. Put that there and a couple slice of corned beef and it's just fantastic. And we're so, I'm so thrilled with how it turned out. It was as delicious as I remember, and uh, I can't wait to do it again. I think I am going to cook the other one just like this um, instead of smoking it. And then when I get uh, the new brisket, I'm going to, um, I'm actually, I think for the brisket, I'm going to continue to make it as corned beef, and then I'm going to use some eye of round, and I will corn that, but I'm going to turn that into, into pastrami by smoking it. So, but I just wanted you guys to see what I have, uh, what it can look like when it comes out. It's got this nice pink color and that is partly because of um, the prog powder, which is a curing salt. Um, we also were able to do some, do our buckets, put the rims on the buckets, fill them up with flour. Um, my dad was here, he fixed the drawers for me, which is fantastic. So this afternoon, I'm going to reorganize my kitchen. That is the plan. We'll see you on the next video.